How do I change my email address? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here. The question, how do I change my email address, varies in its exact wording, but it's incredibly common. The bottom line is that people have an email address and now they want to switch to a new email address, but they want to minimize the problems doing exactly that. Unfortunately, while some services might make it easy-ish, most do not. So let's be clear here. Uh, changing an email address conceptually means you've got something like oldme at randomisp.com and you want to use now a new email address, newme at somerandomservice.com. Everything about the email address is different. The username before the at sign and the domain after the at sign. Unfortunately, that means you're changing more than just your email address. You are changing your email account, which that means, well, it's actually a very simple scenario. It's just a pain in the butt. Create a new account at your new provider. So that means in our example here, we go over to somerandomservice.com and set up a new account with a new email address. Start telling all your friends to use your new email address. Take the steps to go through and change your email address at all of the subscriptions you might have, all of the online stores you might have, um, all of the newsletters you might subscribe to. In most cases, you cannot just email them and say, change my address. You have to go through the process of, for each one of those, changing your email address one at a time. All of them. Export your contact list from your old email account to your new one. Start using your new email account. Move any email saved from your old account to your new account. Rarely is this easy. Uh, there are a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, the simplest conceptually is just to forward all of those emails one at a time to your new account. It's a bit of a pain. The other approach is to set up a desktop email program that uses um, IMAP on your new account and maybe IMAP on your old account, connect them both up and then transfer on your desktop email program your messages from one account, from a folder in one account to a folder in the other account, at which point it'll get uploaded to the new account and you're ready to go. The bottom line here is though, is that's a, again, non-trivial piece of work for anything you might want to save that you've got saved in your old account. Watch your old email account, keep looking. I know that this isn't possible if you've lost access to it, but there are going to be people that either don't get the message or that you've overlooked and they're going to keep sending to your old email address. You're going to have to remind them every time, or you're going to have to say, oh, I forgot about that newsletter. I'll have to go change my email address at that newsletter myself. Um, and carry on. I would keep the old email address open as long as possible just to keep monitoring for like I said, people that didn't get the message, but that's kind of what it boils down to. Now, if you do this with an email program, and I kind of alluded to this when I um, talked about moving messages from one account to the other, I won't say that it's any simpler, but it does make a couple of things interesting. C again, create the account at the new provider. In this case, configure your email program like Thunderbird or Microsoft Outlook from Microsoft Office or the mail program in Windows or any of a number of other desktop email programs. Configure it to access your email at your new provider. Configure it to access email at your old provider uh, or whatever that might be. Again, tell all of your friends to use the new email address, go out and change the email address at all of the services and newsletters and so forth. Watch the old email account, but you can at least get all of your email, be it the old account or the new account, in one place, in your desktop email program. And you can copy mail from one folder to another. You can reply to your old email using your new email. Those kinds of options become available once you're using a desktop email program. Because you store all of your email and your contacts in your desktop email program, you don't really have to worry about doing your contacts. You don't have to really worry about moving much. It's all there on your desktop. It does make that part a little bit easier. Now, the response that I often get is, I don't want a whole new account. I don't want to have to go through all of this stuff. I've already downloaded my email. Can't I just get a new email address that downloads in the same place? No. Like I said, 
A new email address is a new email account. It's how your account is identified in most cases. Even if you're with the same provider, um, email address number one at gmail.com is a completely separate account than email address number two at gmail.com. Same for outlook.com, same for yahoo.com. It's, it's all the same. Each different email address implies a completely separate email account that you have to set up by yourself to start changing your email address. Now, there are things that can help. For example, uh, in the examples that I showed you above, I was talking about continuing to access the old email account. If you've got access, you can try forwarding, automatically forwarding messages from the old one to the new one. This depends a lot on the email service that you happen to be using as your old email service, but you can sometimes configure it to automatically forward every incoming email to a different address. That is one way to deal with this. That way you can continue to pay attention only to your new email address and still get everything that was sent to your old. In that same vein, many email services, your new email service in this case, can be configured to, they kind of act like a desktop email program in that you can configure them to go get the mail from a different account using POP3. That means that your new email account will periodically go out and fetch anything that has arrived at your old email account. The net effect to you is the same. You see all of your old email in your new email account, but um, it's a different way of getting it. And if your old email account doesn't forward or you don't want to forward because it starts looking a little bit too much like spam, then fetching using POP3 is another option. Not all email services provide this feature, but it is a feature that you would need in your new email program. The other thing that I want to talk about are what are called aliases. Some email services will allow you to add what's called an alias. Outlook.com is the only one that I understand or have familiarity with doing this, but it basically allows you to do something a little bit closer to what you're looking for, and that is create a new email address that is essentially the same account. Uh, for example, my Hotmail account also has an Outlook.com email address associated with it. They show up in different folders within the same account, but they're in the same account. You are restricted to only using Microsoft provided email addresses for this feature. Um, and like I said, I know of, right now I know of no other email provider that does this, although I'm sure some of you will probably point a few out that I didn't know about. But the point is it's, it's fairly restrictive. You can't just get a random new email address. It has to be from uh, this specific provider or meet certain criteria. The other question I get all the time is, what if I don't have access to the old email account? Well, honestly, then you're kind of screwed. So far, what I've talked about is an orderly process of moving from one email address to another. What if it's not so orderly, right? What if you lost access to an account and you're not going to get it back? Well, there's really not a whole lot you can do. All you can really do is create your new account, Go tell all your friends, go change all your subscriptions um, or subscribe anew if that's what needs to happen. Um, but if you don't have access to the old account, you don't have access to the old account. There's very little that can be done about that. All you can really do is set up your new account and move forward with that. Now, I will say that there is what I consider to be the ultimate answer. And that is, if you're thinking about changing your email address, consider purchasing your own domain. For example, I own askleo.com. I have an email address, leo at askleo.com. Any email address on that domain, I can create and I can use for whatever I want or assign to different people, whatever. But I actually access that email using Gmail. If I ever lose access to my Gmail account, great. I'll switch it and access my askleo.com email through a different domain, through a different service. I could switch it to Outlook.com or Yahoo or any of a number of other things, or I could do it myself. The bottom line is that by owning your own domain and putting an email address on your own domain, that email address is yours forever, for as long as you choose to own that domain. You can have it serviced by any number of email providers over time without affecting what you have to tell people. Changing the provider doesn't at that point mean you have to change your email address. It's something to consider because it does make a lot of the hassle of running around and changing your email address at all the online services that you've been using and all the newsletters that you subscribe to. It makes that a lot easier because you just don't have to do that. You just use your email address on your domain. 
There's cost involved, a little bit of complexity, not that much, but it's something to consider if this is an issue for you and if you're looking at changing your email address, now is a perfect time to consider it as an option. For comments, for updates, for related links and more, visit askleo.com slash 2178. I'm Leo Notenboom and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.